Welcome back to Packet Tracer 101. Now that we've covered our network devices, we're gonna talk about end devices. And with these end devices, these are gonna be the most commonly used devices when we are building our networks. And these devices are going to be PCs, laptops, and IP phones. And we'll also briefly cover some other devices that are going to be commonly used in these labs that we do, but they are available to you if you want to experiment on your own. So where are the end devices located? In the bottom left-hand corner of Packet Tracer, right next to our network device icon, we can find our end device icon. If we click on that, it's gonna expand to the default options of our PCs, laptops, surfers, and etc. under end devices. And there's also a plethora of internet things devices, and they're located under home networks with smart city, industrial, and there's even a power grid. So if you feel like you want to build maybe uh, something with internet of things devices, there's plenty of them to use. Building an internet of things network is an advanced topic that we won't be covering in these labs, but if you want to experience on your own, definitely go ahead and take advantage of that. So let's start with PCs and laptops. They are Windows-based machines, so they run a simulated Windows operating system. So there's three main tabs that we're gonna focus on. But if we look up here at the top, we notice that there's five tabs. The programming and attributes are not something that you would either commonly or uncommonly use. So we're gonna focus on the physical, the config, and the desktop tabs. The physical tab, very similar to network devices. This gives you the physical view and a list of all the different modules that can be swapped for the existing one in the device. If the device has a power button, you can turn it off uh, to install NICs. So you can have gigabit to the desktop or fiber to the desktop, even wireless if you want. Just remember that PC wireless module, the WMP300N, is not installed by default. And what sometimes takes folks by surprise is that the laptop wireless module, the WPC300M, is also not installed by default, which is unlike commonly buying a laptop today, which all of them have wireless NICs installed. Not the case with Packet Tracer. If you want to have a laptop to have a wireless NIC, you must install it on your own. Next is the config tab. And again, it's very limited, uh, just like the networking devices tab. It's very basic configuration things you can do, like uh, changing the display name or the label of the device. You can configure your basic IP settings, or if you have uh, wireless and Bluetooth configured, you can go in and uh, manipulate the settings there. Uh, but again, very uh, limited in what you can do. And then there's a new tab that's not there, uh, like network devices, it's the desktop tab. And just like you would expect, it's a Windows-like desktop and it has 23 application icons on it. But there's only five of them that we're really gonna focus on that are important to us uh, and that, that we wanna understand how to use. And the first one is the IP configuration tab. And this is where we you would go in to configure an IP, your subnet mask, your default gateway, DNS, uh, your IP address, or you know, if it's IPv4, IPv6, uh, you can also go in there and select uh, this PC or laptop to be a DHCP client by clicking the DHCP radio button. I would say that it's probably easier to configure IP information in this IP config tab on the desktop than it is to go from the config tab. And the next one that's important is the command prompt. I don't think this one requires much introduction. I think everybody knows what the command prompt is. Just be aware that your Windows device it does have the command prompt available and you can ping, trace route, telnet, SSH, all the things you would normally do from a command prompt. Another familiar one is the web browser. So these devices have a fully functional web browser. It will accept any type of the normal input, www, HTTP, or even HTTPS, even just an IP address. There's also a wireless icon. And if you have your wireless NIC installed, you can click on this icon and go in. And this is where you would select the network if you want to connect to. You type in your you know passphrase. And again, this is only if the wireless NIC is installed. If it's not, when you click on this icon, you'll get an error letting you know that it's not installed. Uh, but if you're running 802.1x authentication, this is where you would configure a profile and put in your username and password uh, to save that profile. The last application that has what we would consider the basic knowledge stuff would be the terminal. And a terminal is just a, a terminal emulator application. And it functions like PuTTY, HyperTerminal, or uh, TerraTerm. And it's an extremely simplistic view application, just like PuTTY or TerraTerm. It has no bells or whistles, no options. It just allows you to go in and connect to a council. So we all know that. Uh, in Packet Tracer, all you have to do is click on a device and you can get right in it. Those are the basic tabs. Let's take a look at it in Packet Tracer. So if we go down here, right now it defaults to network devices. So I go over here to the second one, click on end devices, and we notice that end devices are highlighted down here. 
We see all of our options. It's a little small, so let's take a look at uh, PC. Let's fast forward to make sure it's booted up. So if we click on this, we go to the physical tab. If we zoom in, we can see we do have a power button. We see we have a nick down here that's swappable, so we can power this off. And we can go and get this uh, CGE Copper Gigabit Ethernet and go Gigabit to the desktop. Swap that out, right? Or swap that in, power it back on. And just like network devices, this is where you would swap modules out if we want, right? So uh, just like network devices, you have to power the thing off if you want to swap out cards and then power it back on uh, once we do that swapping. Uh, so now we can move over to the config tab and it's got some general information. This is a label that you have we can change. Uh, we can configure DHCP or static. We have our default gateway and our DNS uh, server information here and your actual IP address. And we click on their interface. And in this case, we install the gig card. So you click on gig 00, and that's where you would put your IP address and your net mask. And you can also could enable or disable the interface from here. All right, so let's move over to the desktop tab. And we can see we have a bunch of different applications that we can use. And the five of them that we want to focus on, starting with the IP configuration tab. And this gives us everything all in one. Our IP, our default gateway, our DNS, so we don't have to go to two different places like we do in the config tab. And so it's actually just easier to come here to the desktop and configure an IP than it is to do it from the other way. So if I want to go to DHCP, I just click on the DHCP radio button. Likewise, I could do it for IPv4 or IPv6. And if I'm using 802.1x authentication, network authentication, I can also configure my username and password. And that would automatically be passed when I attempt to connect to the network. Now let's go to our command prompt. Nothing different here. So this is IP config. Uh, so there's no IP address configured on this thing, but the NIC is active. And the next one is the web browser. And again, we could just do www. or uh, HTTP, HTTPS, or just use an IP address. It functions just the same as a web browser on your machine. And the next one is the PC wireless icon. But we will talk about this when we get to laptops because we are going to install a wireless NIC in the laptop. So let's talk about the terminal application. And we mentioned this is where we would go if we want to count into a device and it's extremely simplistic. So we can change these settings, but it defaults to uh, 9600 8911, which that is the default. This is exactly what we want it to be if we want to uh, use a council port to get into a Cisco device. Uh, so we would connect up our cable and then we would just click OK here and we would see our council open up below. So let's take a look at the laptops. They're going to be very similar. We go down here to the laptop icon and we go to the physical view and we zoom in. We notice that it does have an Ethernet NIC installed. So if we click on the power button, we want to make power it off because we want to pull that guy out. And we actually have to drag it out uh, to the left over here. And we just want to make sure we drag it all the way because if we don't, it's going to snap back into place. So we're going to grab the WPC300N wireless module. And we can tell it's the wireless module because it has a little antenna on it. So drag it back into there and power the device back on. And let's click fast forward and make sure it's done rebooting because uh, we just powered it on here. Uh, so again, the physical views, uh, just the physical view of the box. You could turn it on and off. You can swap things, of course. Um, it's even got a microphone and headphones that you can plug in here. Config tab, just like the config tab on a PC. You got your basic settings, your default gateway, uh, DNS, things like that. This has wireless, so I can go in and notice it's set to DHCP. So basic settings that you can configure here. The, the desktop is identical to the PC. Uh, same icons. The only difference is with the wireless NIC installed on this guy, we can look at this uh, here icon and go in and click connect. And if we had wireless networks here, they would show up and we can click on one. And if we wanted to connect to that, it would allow us to connect to that. Uh, and we would obviously be able to enter our password. And uh, we could also go in here and create a profile and say we could create a new profile and then use that profile if we wanted to. So everything you need to do for wireless is all located in the wireless icon. And as you can see, there's a lot of other icons available here for us. And I would say when you have the free time, go ahead and play around with those. But for right now, for the purpose of this course, we're just focusing on these five main applications, which are IP config, the terminal, the web browser, and wireless. Uh, so that's it for the Windows machine in a nutshell. So the next device that we're going to look at are IP phones. And if we go into the physical tab for IP phones, we're going to notice that there's no modules that we can swap in or out. But the Cisco IP phone here has a power cable that's not attached by default. So when we go into the physical tab, we actually have to drag the power cord and literally plug it into the phone. There's also a config tab, but on this one, there's next to no options. You can change the display name and the label name, and that's it. There's nothing else you can do here. It also has a GUI tab, so it doesn't have a desktop. It's not a Windows device, but it does have a GUI tab. 
tab. Now, normally the GUI, you would open that up and it would be just like being at the phone itself, using all the different keys and the menu options that are physical buttons on the phone. But I will say the GUI tab, those options are not all going to be available to you in this GUI tab. Pretty much the only thing that works is it allows you to dial numbers. So the numbers of buttons will do something and they even beep when you push them. But all the other menu things, when you click on them, they don't do anything. So one thing to remember is that if you're using IP phones in your network, none of the routers in Packet Tracer have the unified communications license installed by default. So if you're using the 2900 or the 4300 series routers, you'll first have to go in and install the 60 day free trial license for the unified communications. And then at that point, you'll notice it then accepts all the voice commands you want to configure. And if you don't set up that free trial license, when you try to configure the voice commands, the router is just going to say unrecognized command. So let's take a look at IP phones. So we're going to click on this phone icon here and we're in the physical view and we zoom in here. So we got the power adapter and that's it. And it's actually located down here on the bottom right corner. So this little dot here, this is the power receptacle. So you drag this thing up and you plug it into that right here. Now the phone is powered on. As you can see, the config tab is extremely minimal. There's your option. You can change what the display name is. The GUI tab, any of these things here, none of these buttons work. But if you click on the numbers, 555, 12, these will work. So you can dial numbers here. And this is how in the lab, when you go to test the phone, you would dial a number and see if it goes out. And that is basically the IP phones. Most of what you do with the IP phones is the configuration and the routers. There are some additional end devices. There is a Meraki server, which you can use to help configure and control things. There is an analog phone, just a plain old telephone, a printer, a TV, a tablet, even a packet sniffer. These are not common things. You're probably not gonna be using these, but they are available. So notice that here we have just a plain old analog phone. We can dial numbers with it, but it's analog and it's not an IP phone. So in order to use this phone, we'd have to have some sort of cloud PSTN, and they do have that available. There is a device you can put in, and that's supposed to be these service providers, and we use this telephone switch. So you can have your phones physically connect to that service provider switch and allow analog phones to call each other on the network as well. And of course, some other oddball things, like we said, uh, there's actually a TV, and you can have a packet sniffer. There's even a printer. There's a lot of different uh, end devices. If you really want to go for it and simulate that exact network, you can add these things in, but the most common ones that you're going to be using in this course that we're doing are these top three, the PC, the laptop, and IP phone. I mentioned before that we had a plethora of IoT devices, and they're divided into different categories. There's home devices. We have all kinds of stuff there. Air conditioners, coffee makers, speakers, stereos, garage door openers, sprinkler heads, solar panels, porch lights that we can turn on off you know your ceiling fan there's a bunch of stuff and it all can, can be controlled uh, by a server in the cloud so these were the internet of things options and again these are a little bit beyond the scope of this course but if you want to get more hands-on i highly suggest you follow me over to next gen t link is in the description below we could take you from zero to engineer and we really focus on hands-on training doing labs just like this and even check this out right here when I say that NextGenT really focuses on the hands-on training, I really mean it. When you join our network engineer program, we send you out real equipment just like this. Real switches and routers so you can actually get real hands-on experience using the real equipment that you would see working in the IT industry. No other program out there does that for you. So if you wanna take your career to the next level, come join us and get real hands-on experience with the equipment that you'll be using out in the real world. Join me over at NextGenT where you can actually get hands-on experience.